municipals, this is Ashton. Um, a couple of clarifying things before we jump in today. So this pod is about the NCGA uh, four ball competition that Hussey and I are going to be qualifying for. Uh, I say on the pod that it's April 10th. Uh, it's actually not. It's April 11th. And if you're looking at your watch or uh, phone and saying, hey, that's this morning, that's true. Uh, as you're listening to this, we are probably competing uh, right now. Um, so you could go check Golf Genius or wherever uh, and see what's going down. So I want to clarify that it's today. It is when you are listening to this. Um, the other thing I make mention on here is that this is going to be all one podcast. Uh, clearly, it's not. Um, this podcast was longer uh, than expected. JD gave us some great insights here. So we decided to make it two separate podcasts. So in a couple of weeks, we'll have a full kind of debrief pod about, you know, you'll already know what we shot, but we'll kind of talk about it. Uh, so just be prepared for that. One other thing we wanted to make note of, uh, that since we recorded this podcast, we also found out that uh, Baylands is supposed to aerate their greens two days before we compete. Um, it said supposedly on the email, uh, they let us uh, potentially try to swap sites. We could not do that. So as of now, as I record this intro on April 2nd, we were under the impression that we were going to be competing or trying to qualify on air rated greens, which I'm not going to say a lot here. I'm just going to say that we're going to have a really good attitude, try to hit it in the middle of the green and two putt. I think we had kind of had a preparation call and if we can make a bunch of pars, we'll feel really good about that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thanks for following along. We're excited to talk about it. We're excited to try to compete. And for right now, uh, let's send it to Bryson. How hard did you push it? Till I black out? Yes. Numerous times, yes. Let's get normal. Let's get let's get the facial reactions, because who knows? I might tell Ashton to play right-handed and Hussey to play left. That'd be fun. I think we might shoot 65 on the first like couple holes, but that, that, that would be <laughs> Can you imagine if you if you were so good and you showed up and played each other's bags for like the first couple holes and you're like, wait a second, something's not right. <laughs> and then you just switch back and you're like, oh yeah, this feels better. Go shoot, go go make like eight, 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 and then just rip off a bunch of birdies and eagles to finish, shoot, you know, four or five under and qualify. Isn't that what you isn't that what you guys did in your thing? You remember the, the pop Fucking close. Us? Dude, fucking close. Yeah, double par, triple, birdie, par, 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 par. Then birdie, 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 par, birdie, par, eagle, I think is what it went. And you didn't make it, right? No. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. All right, I think that we don't. You can stop recording, Ashton. It was nuts. I mean, that was USGA. It was. It was well, nutty. No, well, no, we were. You guys, you guys dug yourself. Let's start off again. You were like, yeah, it was double, double, it was double, double, par, triple. double par, triple, yeah. and then yeah, we were five over through three. We went eight under in the last ten. Yeah. To shoot three under and miss it by three, I think. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Was this US or in Yeah, USJ. US. Yeah. Okay. Yep, we or played with a dude one. named Dash, not Dashel, but not not our not our young Dash, but dude, played another dude named so Dash. Good. Yeah. So good. <laughs> he hit the ball so far. He drove the 8th green at Poppy. What? Yeah. Holy hit God. it in the front right. Hit it in the front right bunker. Just Holy like a shit. Slang, like a slanging cut. Like a hammer cut. Oh, he took it over the trees? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he had, I mean, he hit it hard as it was, but he had, That's the he had this like, like 151 ball. Flight yeah. <laughs> he had this like high T, absolutely nuclear 
half the time you knew where it was going and half the time it it landed on spyglass like i I don't know what it was but um yeah anywho that's crazy shall we jump into it people need to know about the birdie 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 eagle birdie 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 triple 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 story because because that's a good one but it, uh, it is it the palace. This is um, this is Ashton, and as you can probably tell if you've listened to any of these podcasts, uh, recurring guest Chris Hussey, uh, and Mr. JD Linder, uh, JD, who uh, I forget the order of operation of these pods, but who I just spent some great time at Bandon with. We'll be talking about that soon. Um, y'all be hearing about that. We got some spicy takes, uh, but this pod tonight is about um, Hussey and I have talked a lot about competing, and we want to compete on our own, but. We've thought a lot about kind of doing uh, a four ball competition together and JD and Greg have been doing that for a while and it's just been something that's been percolating and we signed up. So again, this will come after, um, actually after the results, it's going to be a kind of two podcasts in one, but we are trying to qualify for the NCGA four ball at Baylands on Thursday, April 10th. And this is our first ever kind of I mean, actually, Hussey and I have done a four ball before. <laughs> we, we we kind of shit the bed at Wente and made a bunch of doubles on par. We played there because we wanted to see the golf course. We hated the golf course. Made made just some big scores. It was not our finest showing, and but we enjoyed playing together. And so we're doing it. And uh, JD has been doing this before. He kind of was starting to give me some advice. And I was like, wait a second. Like, we want your advice, but I'm sure there's other people who – are trying to compete and, you know, I'm not sure to make you feel bashful, but, you know, I called you golf dad on the trip. You've got some good insights and we wanted to, wanted to kind of talk about it. So gentlemen, JD, you're joining from a hotel in San Francisco. Unfortunately, not with me right now. Us from his wonderful home in slow, but us, how you doing? It's been a second since we've, uh, I guess I saw you relatively recently, but how you've been doing? Yeah. No, I've been doing okay. Just been busy working. Um, been, uh, Playing not a lot of golf, but every week I play with a, a local group of guys that I've met on the golf course. One of them is a retired Los Angeles fire department chief. Um, and another guy is 40 year old dude. Just us three kind of chipping around on Sundays at 855 Morro Bay. So if you're out there, come on down. There's always spot for one. Um, but yeah, so just been playing Morro Bay over and over again and. It's one of the first times that I've actually been starting to really get to know a course. I mean, back in Walnut Creek, you know, I played Boundary Oak a lot, but um, I didn't know it. I didn't play it as often as I'm playing Morro Bay now because I was always playing with you, you know, rascals out elsewhere. So um, right now it's just getting to know a single course and it's been fun. It's been difficult. Yeah. And Morro Bay rules. That's a, that's a we've never yeah. had a pot about that. That place is, that place is cool. Um, JD, what about you? Work. Other than your, uh, other than your one, other than your, uh, you sending me screenshots of your, you know, one, (laughs) one twenty, one twenty three, one twenty four club head speed driver swings. Yeah. Um, Wow. It's it's more been the dial in the wedges that have been fun, thanks to our good friend Greg Payne. Um, trying to play a little bit, but um just working man trying to get things done make enough money so i can play golf um working on a few things in the golf game trying to get better again which has been kind of a interesting foray into the type of practicing that i've not done in 20 years um the frustration can creep in pretty quickly because you don't see results as quickly as you want. You think you might, and then it doesn't pan itself out in the the number at the end. And um, played on Sunday out at uh, Willow's Run. Ashton, you've been out there. Um, greens are still it's great. The best greens I've ever played. Yeah, hit it. Uh, hit it okay. Missed like a six foot putt on eighteen to to shoot one under. Um, but just kind of one of those like. It's kind of how it's been, right? Hit it okay. Don't make a ton of putts. Make the putts you need to make to keep it around par and nothing really else. Um, and then when you don't hit it well, you putt well or chip well or whatever it may be. So it'll come together at some point. But just been kind of grinding grinding on the golf game and and working a little too hard. Yeah. 
but uh you've got you've got some uh when you go to the masters you get you got some fun stuff upcoming and hopefully you can kind of blow off some steam there i know that's much needed yeah i mean we've got obviously you know as you mentioned we had the the bandon trip um we've got some fun trips coming up i'm looking forward to the cookout um you know that's that's my master so just trying to prime the game for for early may yeah he he's happy to hear that that the garden gnome you gave me <laughs> careful with that do, do you know the connotation with garden gnome shady have you heard about this uh in terms of the um the swinger community not yeah. of not the golf variety yes yeah yes. i think Augusta national um, knows that or do they just not care? I'd like to make sure that I'm allowed into the Masters <laughs> this year. Um, I'm not sure how far broad reaching this podcast goes. So, um, well, Fred Ridley is our biggest we, listener. Yeah, no, no comment, sir. Yeah, I will say <laughs> this guy's pretty. This guy's pretty cute, but the 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 tartan one, the the kind of very formal looking one, they're rolling out this year. Handsome looking guy. So I don't know. But hey, Ashley, wait. Yeah. Quick question. How are you doing? You know, everyone comes on the your pod and you ask them how how you know they're doing. How are you? Thank you for asking, man. I appreciate that. Um, well, ironically, I'm sitting here drinking a partake in a pale ale. Shout out to you, JD. Totally changing my my drinking habits. Um, I'm good. Uh, I finally um, momentum is the wrong way to put it, but. Really, this week has been the first time I've actually buckled down and paid attention to my job search, which has been mixed emotions a little bit. Um, you know, there's sort of like a, this sounds like a very privileged thing to say, but I'm sort of I feel bad saying this, especially to you, JD. But I'm like coming to terms with the fact that like me not knowing what day it is is going to end at some point soon. Like that's been just tremendously nice. Um, but it does seem like the job market softening a little bit, and it's just kind of. I don't know. I, I feel, I always kind of feel this way. Like this is my favorite time of year. Cause like I've always been obviously love the masters love baseball, but it's kind of the time of rebirth. And so it kind of feels at the right time. I was like, cool. I've kind of, you know, lay low focused on myself this, this winter. Um, and I don't know, like obviously something new is coming down the pipe. I don't exactly know what it is, but, um, I'm not exactly chomping at the bit to go to work tomorrow, but, uh, I can kind of, you know, see something on the distant horizon and, I'm excited about that. Um, golf wise, I mean, honestly, I, I totally hit a wall last week. Um, I played Wednesday and Friday after our abandoned trip and I just did not have any fun. I, I didn't play great, but that really wasn't the point. I just, I kind of processed that I've just kind of OD'd on golf. And so clubs are fully away this week. I'm kind of taking a, a 10 day, just kind of clear, clear the brain. Um, get my clubs regripped again, kind of the, 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 the clean the slate idea, but yeah, I, I can't wait for some some meaningful golf coming because I got um, our, our local no laying up group. We have a little a, a tournament called uh, Chunks at the Chuck. It's uh, Hussey almost won the thing last year, um, but it's a two person tournament. You kind of get paired up with somebody random. It's nine holes scramble, nine holes best ball, nine holes all shot, um, and it you know it kind of it matters. So doing that, um, and I guess two like ten days. Um, and then we got our qualifier the week after, uh, playing some golf that weekend. And then, you know, cookouts coming up soon. And uh, I want to maintain my five, four, five, oh, five, one and oh record. Uh, I would like to maintain and bring the burgers uh, another win. So, yeah, things are good here. I mean, it's just with, with, with baseball getting started up and I've been rewatching the the Masters. It's, it's just it's the best time of year. Longer days. I love that. The rain's done soon. I love that you you said it's Masters and Opening Day Baseball, and it feels like a time of rebirth with this Sunday is uh, Easter. So that just works. It all works. The time yeah. of resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess earlier in my life it would have started with Easter, but at this point in my life it's more <laughs> – it's more uh, – yeah, I guess it's more golf. But they have, I, I, I only know that. I only know that because I got, I got Friday off, man. Oh, okay. Wait, so this Sunday, this Sunday is Easter? This Sunday yeah. is Easter. Oh. Amen, I say to you. You know, sorry if that offends the listeners. I don't know. I don't know. For, former Catholic here. Still racked by Catholic guilt at times, so that's the extent of what I've got over here. Uh, no, but thank you, Hussie. I'm, I'm doing well. But, JD, I'm going to throw the keys to you. I, we don't really have an agenda. Um, 
this is not really about Baylands per se, because you haven't played the golf course. We just love to hear some insights or, or things that you think that we should know heading into our first competition together. Well, I think that this actually came to me as as we were were opening this up, but for those of you who haven't played with one or either of these gentlemen, um, this will give you a little bit of a sneak peek into generally how they play golf. I, I think they're both. Hussey, what's your handicap right now? 4.6. And Ashen, kind of similar? Exactly the same, actually. 4.6. Yeah, I mean, you guys are like the best four and a half indexes I've ever seen on the planet. Um, I don't, I've never put this together until just now. And I don't know if either of you realize this, but the first hole of golf that I played with each of you, you both made birdie. Ashton That's birdied so the first true. hole. Ashton birdied the first hole at uh, Monarch. Um, it's like caveat; he was playing a tee up. But um, the uh, the first hole at the Cookout and in Ohio Cookout OG, if you yeah. will, uh, Vintage One. Uh, Hussey and I are paired up in a four ball format. Um, I think I was first ball off the tee. I think it went somewhere around 170 it it yards left. forward yeah. and about 170 yards left. So total <laughs> of like 340. I, I, I had been talking to you up and you almost, yeah, I remember you had a three wood. It almost went in the water and I went, oh, like literally. Yeah, I, we, like, I was like, oh, we had, God, to, like, <laughs> we, we had to yell four. Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> it it wasn't good. So, so partner is out of the hole and, you know, Hussey stands up, hits a, you know, patented towering dead straight ball. You know, he's got these wedges that are six inches long with oversized grips and 17 wraps underneath. And I'm like, who is this guy? And he hits it to like 10 feet and he's telling me how bad he is at putting. And he steps up and just buries it right in the center of the hole. And I'm like, glad he's on my team. I get boat race today. Um, so that was my first experience with with both of you. And I think that that generally rings true across your golf games um you both make on a relative basis an absolute shit ton of birdies some of this is just going to simply come down to the timing of those birdies right if you both make four and they're on the four same holes it's, you're just kind of unlucky to a certain extent right the chances that that happens are are low but I, I think the the really really hard thing or a couple of the really hard things to do in both tournament golf in general, for those that don't play a ton, right, which I'm certainly in that camp at this stage in my life and have been for a long time, um, but also in team golf specifically, is sticking to your normal routine, right? So Ashton, I know you've you've gotten a little, you've changed the routine a little bit, but when I first met you, if you had a nine o'clock tea time, you were showing up at, you know, 8.58 and 30 seconds. Um, I would tell you that that version of Ashton should show up 30 minutes before your tee time. You got to, you got to, you should be on the tee like 10 minutes before in a tournament, but um, you shouldn't change your routine of how you warm up and how you get ready for a round and how you mentally prepare because you end up putting kind of that undue pressure on yourself. So whatever your normal kind of process is, find that out. You know, I would try some different things generally, but if your normal process is to show up and, you know, hit a half bucket of balls and roll a couple of putts and go to the first tee, then show up and hit a half bucket of balls and roll a couple of putts and go to the first tee. Um, and the other thing is, is Ashton, what, what you mentioned, and this is probably the harder part. We get so accustomed to playing golf courses that are set up by half drunk, half asleep superintendents the day of 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 play on a saturday um and when you show up to a tournament especially one that's you know relatively sanctioned chances are you're gonna have a pin sheet they're gonna have designated holes the old thought process process was you have kind of six green light pins six yellow light pins and six red light pins this is kind of the old school way of setting up a golf course um and the thought there is generally speaking the flag stick isn't going to be your target and trying to recalibrate how you frame 
kind of where you're looking can be challenging when pins are cut, you know, five paces off two edges of the green, right? Five paces from the back and five paces from right. All of a sudden, anything long or anything right is dead. So your target becomes kind of slightly short and or slightly left, depending on the club that you have in your hand. So it's that idea of if you go out and try to, that's what I mean, if, if you go out and try to shoot 65, if you go out and try to fire at that first pin that's tucked behind a bunker, that's tucked short of a, you know, fall off on the back edge. And uh, this happened to Greg and I actually in our our last four ball qualifier, very first hole. Um, Greg hit a good wedge, went a little long. I had kind of a rough lie, but same thing, kind of went after the flag stick, went a little long, falls off in the back. You're dead, right? I mean, you're playing a good golf course with quicker greens and you got a shot that you can't go up in the air. You probably got a bump. Like you brought six into play and you definitely aren't making more, aren't making better than five. Take those wedges and hit them, you know, take one less club and hit it a little further left for us. And you got two 25, 20, 25 foot looks. You bring three into play. You take five out of play. And you do that enough times, hole enough putts, get lucky enough to hit a couple close. And you never know what what score you might kick out. But that's that idea of if you get into that mindset of pressing early, right? I got to make birdies. I got to make birdies. I got to make birdies. You're going to bring bogeys in. Then you got to make more birdies. So I would just say that you both make plenty of them. You'll have plenty of opportunities and plenty of looks across functionally 36 holes, right? You're both going to be playing the same 18, but 36 looks at it. Um, you know, I've, I've, I have confidence that you'll make, you know, five, six, seven birdies between the two of you. Um, if they happen to come on different holes and you avoid, and you avoid the bogeys, it's plenty good enough to shoot a number that you think is going to be good enough to qualify. Would you, would you say that it's that kind of our mindset going into this is maybe to be less taking less risks and and just playing a bit more conservative because in a tournament setting, everyone's going to be kind of all over the place. You could be playing against people who are super experienced, but you could be playing against people like Ash and I who are not experienced at all. And so they may make dumb mistakes or, and so if you just eliminate bogey, double bogey, and just try and make par um, and, and, be a little more more conservative and the bogey or the birdies will eventually come, but by eliminating and being conservative, um, you're actually going to let the field kind of separate themselves from you. Is that a fair way of looking at it? To an extent, I think that I would, um, <laughs> I'd maybe look at it in two different segments of the game. So Hussey, what, what's your favorite club to hit off the tee? Uh, two iron. Okay. Generally speaking, when I've played with you, you've hit the driver fantastic. You tend to hit kind of a high straight ball. Uh, um, if the golf course allows for it, I'm not saying you've got to try to force the issue with hitting driver when it's not appropriate, but provided there's not you know, out of bounds that sucks in really tight on both sides. If you generally like the look at the tee shot, if you feel kind of comfortable, your best option is to play relatively aggressive off the tee. Try to push it as close to the green as you can. Give yourself a the shortest club, the best opportunity to hit it in inside, you know, 20, 30 feet, right? Which within within reason, I, I, I presume. Like if it's a sure if it's a 350 yard par four for me hitting driver is out of the question just because that'll leave me with like, you know, a chippy 60 degree wedge with depends zero spin your, capability. Yeah. It depends on, I, I, I would say this, it depends on a couple of things. Yeah. How do you feel from, how do you feel from, you know, 50, 60, 70 yards? Um, and where's the flag stick? Yep. Yeah. Right. Flag stick up front tucked over a bunker. I'm with you. I'd probably favor something that's, whatever your kind of favorite full, full but still yeah. shortest shot, right? Yeah. I don't want you to hit a full eight iron. I'd rather have you hit a three quarter wedge than a full eight iron. Right. Um, it's where it's tough to just throw a blanket statement over it and say, play more conservative. Sure. 
you shouldn't play right. conservative and you sh certainly shouldn't play more conservative than you would just playing your own game. And that'll lead me to kind of another piece of advice here in a moment. But I would want you to play, if I were your teammate, I would want you hitting driver just about anywhere that you felt relatively comfortable. Okay. I'd want you using your length and accuracy to your advantage. Um, I get it as somebody who has historically struggled at that kind of 40 to 60 yard range. Um, if you feel like you're better at 80 or 90, fine. Hit the club that you think you can get to 80 or 90. Um, I think the more that I've played, though, the more that I realize with nerves, even though the driver used to be thought of as one of the harder clubs to hit, I think that's kind of migrated over the years with the golf ball and golf club technology. Um, it sure as shit is a lot easier to hit something that's teed up a couple inches than something sitting on top of the turf. Sure. When you got the nerves going. So I would, I would say play relatively normal slash aggressive off the tee. Um, and then into the green, it's just be a little bit more aware. Um, I'm not saying aim it at the middle of the green necessarily. I think generally speaking, that's going to be far too conservative to make enough birdies but I wouldn't be firing at flight sticks, at least intentionally. I'd be really committed to a target that's depending on the club, you know, 10, 15 feet left, right, short, long, whatever that may be. Um, make the easy pars and maybe you drop a couple of putts for a birdie here and there. Um, it's just about giving yourself looks. It's keeping it in front of you off the tee while being aggressive and then having as many birdie looks simultaneous birdie looks right not where ashton's in pocket and hussey's trying to make a birdie or vice versa it's can both of you be on the green in regulation and have a relative chance at a birdie on a fair number of holes right it's unreasonable to think you're both going to hit 18 greens in regulation um but if you both hit whatever your normal number is 10 11 12 13 14 whatever that number is um hit as many greens as you can in regulation, give yourself as many looks. The other part to that is when you're playing with a teammate, there is the added layer of like, you don't want to just play well for you. You have somebody that's kind of relying on you to play well. Um, and that can cause you to play more conservative. Like I don't want to hit it over here. So I'm just going to play, I'm going to hit a four iron because I know I can hit it here, right? Well, who's going to say, who's to say the four iron hit goes there, right? Ashton, it's like what we talked about at Emerald Valley when we played before Bandit on that short little par four. It's like, there's nothing up there that should scare you. Hitting five iron shitty off the tee and leaving a seven iron into a 330 yard par four is, it, it, it just brings other things into play that you don't think about because you think you're just going to hit the five iron good. But by that thought process, you might as well just think you're going to hit the driver good and hit that club. Right. So you don't want to back off so much off the tee. Um, you just want to play with some margin going into the greens because the pins are likely to be set up a little bit different than you're used to. And you were saying with that same idea, I remember you mentioning you're not you're not a fan of the idea of like, unless there's a comfort thing. Like, you're not a big fan of, like, I'll hit five iron, you hit driver. It's like, like one of us being more conservative and one of us being more aggressive. Unless it's like, hey, like, for me, like, let's just say that on that day, I've got that kind of gross right ball that just pops up and there's shit right. And it's like, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to do something else here. But if there's, if there's not a reason to, you'd promote us just, let's both hit driver and just do it. Like, we're not trying to play two different games. Yeah, so I'm trying to think of um, trying to think of a hole that we've all played. Um, what if we took like 11 at Peacock Gap? Long par four, right? Great Something hole. you're likely to encounter. Kind of a, a tough hole, stuff left, some stuff right. Um, I think generally... I think I hit like hybrid seven iron into that hole or something when I played it last time. Um, I generally think that 
unless you're not comfortable with the tee shot, you kind of just stand up there and and rip it up there, right? And the reason I don't like that idea of five iron first, <laughs> let's say that Ashton, you're going to hit the five iron and Hussey's going to hit driver as an example. Hussey, how would you feel if Ashton steps up and just kind of just hits a stinker of a five iron up there? It's not in a good spot. Maybe it's not in the hazard per se, but it's not in a good spot. You just watched Ashton like lay the sod over a toey five iron that went like 150 yards. You going to feel very good stepping up to your tee ball? No, I'd probably go and get a two iron or, or you know, something, something lower. And then realistically, like I'm assuming, <laughs> well, like I'm assuming your dispersion with a two iron is 50 yards left to right. Like, that would be kind sure. of pretty good for a tour quality player from 240 yards or however far you hit that golf club. Your dispersion with a driver is probably 70. Yeah. Maybe 60. So like my point is you have confidence with the two iron. That's great. You should have confidence with the driver too, because you hit it pretty damn good. Um, and there's no telling that you're going to hit the two iron good or the driver bad. So unless it is something that is, the third hole at Karika South where there's kind of trouble everywhere, trouble both sides and you don't really need to pump a driver up there. Um, unless it's something like that, where the trouble just gets so narrow where it just does not make sense to hit a driver for either one of you, then don't do it. You should hit driver though. in almost every other instance, as long as it's not, over penalizing or like dude if you're standing over a driver going like this doesn't feel right i don't care what like the stats will say don't hit driver yeah outside of that though pump that sucker everywhere and and the good thing about baylands for for what i remember is there's a few holes that are double fairways that you could just pump driver you know anywhere um so i think that makes it a little bit easier there's a few holes that are that have, you know, quite a bit of waste area that you have to, you know, it's either on the, I think, I think a lot of the waste area is on the right side of the entire, uh, the way it's routed, it's always on the right. So that's just something we'll keep in mind. But um, yeah, when you no, say waste area, are you talking like marshy, like can't find the yeah. ball or are you talking like, like bunker can play it out of there? Talking about marshy. I think the last, the only time I played there was in the winter and it was like flooded. I think, okay. I think, yeah, I, I, I don't know what There's we're going to it, encounter. It's got, a lot of, it's got a lot of red stake with the green where you can't go in to. Oh, yeah. Like protected area stuff. So, but, but um, I, think, I think, I think overall it's, it's actually a pretty forgiving goal. Like it, it's creek yeah. ass in the sense of it's, I would it's not wide. describe it as like, yeah, like we played Del Monte and like Del Monte is very like, tight with small greens like that's not we're actually going to play wide with like pretty huge greens yeah greens. yeah quite yeah. the opposite better for us so it's better for me well let me tell you a story about um tournament that i played in a long time ago with green capped red stakes and fundamentally how not to play the game of golf essentially so there's this par five a, there's a dune in the middle so split fairway um I was probably just getting to the point in my life where I was long enough to carry the dune if I wanted to take it on and try to, to take on, take on the par five and two, but fundamentally this entire hole, the dune is protected about 240 yards up the right side. You run into more protected area and the entire left side of the hole is protected area. So it's fundamentally a hazard everywhere, right? Um, the hole goes out over the dune goes forward another maybe a couple hundred yards and then makes a sharp dog leg right. So you have to carry, you have to carry the hazard in some way, shape or form to get there. So trying to play conservative, I hit two iron off the tee, hit it up the right side, hit it great. Um, it got through the fairway up the right side and was a foot into the protected area. Just sitting on sand, I easily could have played it, but not allowed to, right? So take the drop. Now I'm frustrated. Uh, I probably had another 200 and 30, 240 yards, hit another two iron, trying to go kind of at the flagstick. 
Um, I was hedging my bets by going a little bit left, pulled it a little bit, hit it through the dog leg, um, would have been like five yards short of green, but hit it through the dog leg towards what is on that angle, the left side of the hole, but fundamentally kind of the back of the green, one foot into another green capped red stake. Um, so I tried to play it what I thought was the right way, being quote unquote conservative. I made two relatively good swings and I took two penalty strokes. So again, there's no telling what you're going to do, but I can definitely tell you if I would have pumped driver, at least if it was one foot into the red stake, it would have been another 50 yards further forward. And I would have had seven iron in for my second shot versus two iron. So you both hit it good enough off the tee. You both hit it long enough off the tee. Use that to your advantage. I'm not saying just go up there and be irresponsible with where you're hitting driver. Um, but fundamentally, the golf course that you're describing to me, you should probably plan on hitting driver 12 to 14 times. There's even a par three that you can hit driver on. It's like nice. 240 into the wind. Oh, I, oh. I, I hit a, little, I hit a uh, three wood there last time. Yeah. yeah. Little chippy chippy driver. Yeah, I refuse. Um not until I'm not until I'm fifty. I'm not hitting driver on a par three till I'm fifty. <laughs> I don't care. I said that when we played out at out at out at Monarch with the eighth hole or whatever it is, that if they play it all the way back and into that howling wind, oh, yeah. it's like two fifty into the wind. Mm-hmm. Um, I said it that once. We did it on 11. I remember it was bl- black tee all the way back, wind in our face, and we both hit like chippy drivers on 11. Yeah, not doing it. Rica. Not doing it. Yeah. yeah. No. Again, it wasn't a good um, idea. A- I, think, I think I hit it 150 yards left because I decelled <laughs> on the way down. I did a back it's foot a pride decel. and ego thing. How are, how are you guys feeling? Um, like, are you starting to get kind of. I mean, I know it's still, what, a week and a half or two weeks away, whatever it is, but um, are you guys starting to feel like kind of getting amped, feel like um, you got it marked on your calendar, or is it just kind of something that's coming up for you? Well, for me, I'm trying to harness, I'm trying to think back to the days when I was very, very athletic and competitive in like high school with sports and how like, you know, before before a basketball game, before a championship game or something like that, you get those jitters and you're nervous and whatnot. But I was able to harness that and and use it to my advantage um, to play to play lights out, use that adrenaline and 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 use it as a positive. The the one thing is that with golf, it's so solitary that it's really difficult to kind of harness that on your own. Whereas when you're with a team you can kind of see the collective energy together. And so I'm looking forward to it, especially now that I have a teammate. And that's why I really enjoy the cookout. And I think I thrive at the cookout because I have a teammate that I can then harness my energy with and we can really go out there and kick some ass. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to... There, every now and again, I'll, I'll say, and this has happened at the cookout, for every match that like the pressure is the shit I live for. And I want to use that and, and really harness that energy into, into playing really well. Um, but also, you know, playing well for Ashton, and, you know, just trying to have a good time too. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, um, Sounds like you don't have much going on at all. You're like trying to harness the adrenaline of competition, but also like have fun and relax and play well for well, Ashton, but also play well for myself. And well, be, sounds like you're very, very peace of mind. I I, I hope so. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's good. That's normal. Ashton, how are you feeling? Um, I actually feel very peaceful about it in a good way because i think for me i have i I don't know like i um i I haven't talked about this and we're not really going to because this it didn't end up playing out because i couldn't actually compete in it because of bandon it's a long story but um like i shot in in the city championship qualifier I, i shot 87 and you know i started off par birdie and you know for like two seconds, I was leading the event. I was standing on three T. Um, 
but I just kind of like totally lost it. And, you know, I, I just remember calling my dad and being like, it's not that I'm not good enough. It was just the, like, I am so unfamiliar. And also I don't like to say this, but like, I'm just like really uncomfortable in the situation. Right. Because to me, it's not actually that like the pin locations are hard or that there is a tent that, you know, you know, it's none of that. It's the, like, I, I, like the way I describe it to people, I, I don't know, especially with Hussey is I was like, our concept of fun is let's go have a 36 hole match. Let's not drink beer. And let's take this like seriously. Like that's how that's how we like to play golf. Like we did it at Bandon, right? It's like mm -hmm. we're gonna go play a fifty dollar final team match. You know, there's nothing crazy, but there's eighty dollars on the line, and we care, and we're gonna play by the rules. So it's like I, it's like I, I don't play hit and giggle golf. I really don't. But I think the hard part though is like when I'm at the city championship, and you know everybody else in my group has like caddies and. Cantley, everybody has just taken themselves way, 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 way too seriously. It just gets out under my skin because I'm so not used to like, and it's not like music or alcohol, none of that. But it's just like when Hussey and I are playing like a serious ass match of 555 Nassau, it still feels like we're human beings. And when like I got fucking this kid, this high school kid's dad explained it to me that his son doesn't want to follow the E4 rule, he wants to go back to the T when we're like 45 minutes behind pace of play, I just get really uncomfortable in that situation. I don't have a lot of experience doing that. I don't, I don't know what my role is in pace of play. I don't, I just don't feel comfortable. But the thing, the reason I don't feel comfortable partly is because I have nobody to talk to. It's just me, right? Like when I'm sitting there and I'm on six T and this kid's over here fucking around trying to go back to the T and his dad's walking in my backswing and this guy's over there. I just literally feel like I'm on an island and there's times where I relish that, like, you know, uh, the cookout, I guess you're not totally on an island cause with your friends, but like, it's like, no, it's me and it's Rick and we're going to have this like knockdown drag out battle and someone's going to win at the end. I find that fun. But when it's like five people on the green and like, you know, Hey, I didn't actually want the flag stick out. And like, you know, you're, you're, it's like, I just, it just makes me uncomfortable. And, and the thing is, I know we'll have a part of that. But if just in that moment when like Rob is like taking himself too seriously, I look at Hussey and go, it's going to feel okay. And so for me, it's like, I'm not like, I don't know. Like I, I would, I have, I have these ideas in my head of, you know, these grand aspirations of, you know, just me and NCJ, you know, mid-am and this stuff, maybe. But the more that I think about this, the more it feels like the team component and the other person too, I'm not make, saying this make you feel weird. I think hope, hope I feel the same way is like, I actually feel most comfortable on a golf course with Chris Hussey. I just do. Like we've played more golf together than I think I've played more golf with him than anybody. W good times and bad times or handicaps are always somehow within a stroke of each other. We play a 36 hole match and we end up tied. I don't know. It's just like demeanor. I feel like I'm a little bit more up. He's a, like, I, I'm a, I kind of bring a little more energy Hussey kind of mellows me out, but we can, we can, but like, I can be a seven or I can be a six. He can be a four, but we always kind of hang out around a five. And like, that's what I need in golf where again, sometimes it's just like when this guy is over here being a total dickwad in the bunker, I can just look at Hussey and go like, and that's just going to mellow me out. Where like when I'm standing on the six T of an individual stroke play thing, I just don't feel like I have that. And I, and I need to build that muscle. I need to build that scar tissue. I need to, I, I, I need to keep trying, but I think the team component is going to help a lot because to your point, if it's like, if I hit it, if I fucking hit a bad drive, it's like, I'm not going to apologize. And be like, cool, man. Like I need you to pick me up and I got you. Like, I got you all good, you know, but to have like a fail safe, like, if you like, like if you make a not like, like if, if I'm playing in a stroke play qualifier pack tunes and I make a nine, all I can think about is it's like, I'm fucked. I just walk on. It doesn't matter. Right. No matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to compete. It's over. And it's really nice to know in a four ball. It's like, it's never over. Right. I mean, your story, you didn't qualify, but like theoretically when you're five over, you should just go, you know, pack it up and walk out of there you guys battled and kicked and clawed and almost made your way back. And, and and there's something about the team component that has me excited, but like, I feel a sense of like Zen of like, it doesn't matter what we actually, because we have each other's back, if that makes sense. And that's yeah, cheesy, the, but that's what I mean. Hell yeah. The five, 
the five over through three, I actually looked at Greg walking off the back of the green. I think the guys we were playing with were like even or one over. Like they weren't torching the golf course, right? And I was just like, we probably like just stay out of their way. Like at least they still have a shot type of a deal. Like whatever. And Greg's like, we're going to get it back on track. And then he made birdie on that hole. Um, it's probably the best outside of the first few holes. It's probably the best round of tournament golf I've seen that that guy play. Um, he actually a- absolutely lit it up for us. But it really did, walking off the back of the 18th green, it was like, I know we didn't make it. Yeah. But holy shit, did I, do I also know that we, we could run laps around these guys if we yeah. could find a way to string holes together without some of those bigger numbers um like we absolutely have the shot making capability and the talent to to blow some of those kids out of the water um it's just a matter of doing it and we don't do it that often so the chances that that it all just magically comes together when you want it to you know can be low but it's why you play ashton though i have a i have a question for you and maybe it's helpful for this event maybe it's not but Forget who you're playing with, whether it's hussy, friends, others, randoms. Um, describe to me what the environment is where you think you're set up to play your best golf. Put the best number on the board. Um, like, is it music? Is it music playing? Is it you're playing a match against somebody that you tend to you know, you can focus yeah. in, like what yeah. makes you kind of put those blinders on and play golf? Well, I think I can answer that by a specific round. It was, I remember last year I played a match against Fabian and we were like a stroke or two, like he was giving me one or I was giving him, we were essentially the same handicap. And, you know, we, th- this match mattered. It was for our local no laying up chapter. And yeah, it was one of those where it's like, we wanted to beat each other, but like, you know, it wasn't like a, you know, it wasn't like a qualifying environment where like that just feels so sterile sometimes. Yeah. A little bit of music and, but like, and it was just, I think for me, it was just good play feeding off each other. I I think on the front nine between the two of us, we made eight birdies, seven birdies. Um, And it was just like, he'd make a putt. I'd make it on top of him. He would hit it to, like on number 11 at Olympic club, I remember he had a wedge, he laid up to 90 yards. He had a wedge that he almost made. And then I had pushed it all the way up by the green set, like all the way up with a three wood. And I almost chipped in and we both made birdie and walked off. And it was just that, and I think I told you the story. Like it was one of those where I beat him on the 15th hole. And he looked at me, he goes, do you know you're one over? And I was, I was like, I have, I'm like, you could tell me, I have no, I was completely blacked out on score. It didn't matter. I was locked and I was competing. So for me, I think it's where it's like, it's someone who's, you know, about the same, comp, about the same skill level where it's like competitive, but it's sort of like a competition that we're creating um, as opposed to, I, I just still have a lot of experience with like the, you know, the, the USGA or NCGA that, you know, those like the, the, the formality of golf tournaments um, it it, t- it takes me back to playing really really shitty when I was like eleven years old and just walking off sure. being like, why did I? I just shot like a hundred and three and finished like t forty amongst like a bunch of twelve year olds. You know, like what am I doing? It, it kind of gives me some so, PTSD. I'm gonna back that out to. I was, I was hoping to get something out of that, and what I wanted I to get out of it too. was, <laughs> no, you did. You you didn't intentionally, but you did. Um. You didn't know where you stood and you were presumably right playing within some sort of process. Mm-hmm. You have your pre-shot flow. routine. I, I, I feel the flow that day. I felt. The yeah. Flow. You had a pre-shot routine. You went through your pre-shot routine. You were out there trying to put a ball to a specific location, find it, put it to another specific location and see what that number added up to at the end. Right. No. And I remember like no swing thoughts, no, like. Sure. And what I wanted to get to though, was more of this idea of like, you have your world and your bubble that you're going to play your best golf. And so does everybody else. That doesn't mean that your bubble is going to be the same as theirs. And the really hard part about tournament golf is 
trying to stay in your bubble and not worrying about what's going on in the other bubble. Whether, whether, whether Nick or whatever the guy's name was that didn't want to take the E4 and wanted to go back. Hey, he, if he has a reason for it, it's his right to be able to do it. And you've got to be able to find a way to check out for that five minutes that it's going to go on of looking for the ball, getting back to the tee, hitting the ball, getting back down to you where your mind's not tied up. There's enough mental stress and mental shit going on during a round of golf that if you're sitting there going, fuck this guy, like, I can't believe this is happening. You're just wasting mental energy on that. So you've got to find a way to almost just make it this match play esque shot by shot process by process. I think sometimes people take it a little bit overboard. Like I agree. I don't think, you know, you see these guys on tour where they get disrupted and they, they put the club back in the bag and they take their glove off and they put it in their back pocket and they take it back out of their back pocket and put the glove, like they go through like the entirety of the pre-shot routine. I think that might be a little bit overdone and that's not the point that I'm making, but I think you got to find out where you play well and then stop worrying so much about what's going on with your competitors. Cause they're trying really hard to fight through some of those same nerves and some of that same shit that you're going through. Um, yeah. Some people's routines are going to be different. Some people are going to play slow. Some people are going to play really fast. Um, Some people are going to have caddies. Some people are going to be talkative. Some people are going to be quiet. But you've got to find what works for you and and play that way. Um, Sing yourself a song in your head because you're not going to be playing music on the golf course. Yeah, that's a good point. Because, I mean, as as Hussey will laugh, I mean, I also I've gotten way better at it. But I've also been well known in like on a Sunday round to like completely tie myself in knots about pace of play when like there's not a lot that can be done um yeah like like I, i'll just sort of get like apoplectic sometimes um granted i've gotten pretty good at like calling the pro shop and being like this is my problem you guys need to come fucking figure this out but in the past i've kind of tied myself in knots and to your point given a lot of energy to like that situation and then it's like I'm not, it's like I'm not even playing golf anymore because I'm just focused on like, well, how can we resolve this situation? And really, I, I probably can't. And I think that's where this team format's going to actually be actually probably pretty, pretty good for us. Because if right. there's a lot of downtime where normally you'd be talking shit about someone, for example, we can just have a conversation about, you know, <laughs> our lives or whatever. You know, it's like if we have to wait on, you know, asshole to go back and, you know, figure some stuff out then so be it we'll keep each other busy and stay in our process and not really think about other people so um yeah yeah, i think you just something you you can tell me we're gonna drop some you can look at me and smile and just say drop it and i'll be like i'll know what that means right it's like yeah Yeah. right i don't i don't need to waste energy on this thing have you guys decided whether or not i don't think this is a huge deal it's a little bit nitpicky but um you guys gonna help each other read putts you're gonna ask for help if you want it um, do you guys know who's teeing off first? Do you care? Um, some of the little stuff around that quote unquote process, right? Are you going to talk through shots? You're going to talk through T shots, T strategy, whatever that may be shots into greens. If you're close enough to each other, do you guys kind of iron that out? Dude, we don't even know if we're going to ride on a cart or walk, you know, it's like, that's, yeah, it's a good question the because there's, I could have asked for <laughs> Like, there's just a lot of like, yeah, we haven't talked about any of this stuff. So, um, yeah. No, but it's, it's a good, it's a good question. I, yeah. I haven't thought about any, any of that. So we got to think we, of nervous, nervous energy, right? You're going to get out on the first tee and you're going to walk up and they're going to say you guys are first or second, right? And you guys can choose who goes first m- amongst you, but it's going to be the team that either goes first or second. And the last thing you want is the like Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yeah. meme or gif or whatever it is where it's like are you going am i going are you who, uh like you're already going to be kind of you know you're gonna Let's have the, tease. the grumbly <laughs> grumbly sure if that's and that's fine like it doesn't need to be regimented i just think you should agree upon some ground rules for how you're going to play as a team um yeah where you're going to want help where you're not um no it's a good it's a good question because i know for me like with putting it's like sometimes i find that like at the cookout, I'll ask for a read and it definitely, I'm, I'm like, like, like I will find, I'll ask for a read and I find it detrimental. I'm like, shit, that's, that's putting something into my head. Like, 
I thought it was really breaking the other way, which like, you know, maybe they're right. But also too, I found like that happens sometimes where it's like, it's probably better to call in if necessary. Cause sometimes you're like, you know, you just, you feel it. And then you ask somebody else and it's like, Oh shit. Now I'm like, you're over the ball being like, his or mine, his or mine meet in the middle. Yeah. Like that doesn't feel good. Yeah. You know, split, split the difference. He said, left I, mean, edge. We, I said, right. Edge, so we'll save in the middle. <laughs> We've played enough kind of casual team golf, you know, on a, you know, on a random Sunday every now and again, uh, against other people to like, you know, you got this until you need my help, like, and vice yeah. versa. Like, it's only when you truly need need a second opinion that um, we'll ask. So I, I think I think that's kind of the process we'll we'll go through, but we haven't discussed any of yeah. this. So that's. But, but what I yeah, will say, Huss, though, questions. like I I don't I, you know want to be mindful of like you know the tournament setting and you know make sure we're doing this the right way. But I remember this was I mean I don't know two years ago. But when we were both playing really good golf, we talked a lot about commitment. And I do think there would be sort of a power of like, you know, of like we were going through this phase where like we we just kind of, I mean, there's one time or an entire round, he would be <laughs> like, okay, I'm hitting a pitching wedge. I'm aimed at the left side of the green. And he'd tell me, and I go, cool. And I said, are you committed? He said, yep, I'm fully committed to the shot. And we both like played, oh, it was Rams Hill. Fuck Rams yeah, Hill. Yeah, it was Rams like, Hill. Yeah, we, 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 we vocalized what we wanted to do. And then the other person would ask for like verbal confirmation that they were committed to that. And then they would do it. And I think we both shot like 76 and it was like, Oh, because it wasn't like, well, I thought it was a nine, but then I kind of got up over it and like kind of decel because like, I just kind of took something off and I was like, no, this is what I'm doing. I told you I'm committed to it and now I'm going to go do it. And there's, that's something to think about the team golf setting around, like, you know, not going on and on. Right. But just being like pitching wedge left side of the green. You know, because also, dude, there might be, to JD's point, it might be like, wait, that's tucked over the flag. Like, that's not, like, that actually is a moment of, like, that's that's not the line, man. You know, we could actually, you know, talk it out a little bit. So, yeah. Something use each other as a good golf. Yeah. Yeah. Use each other as a caddy. Um, like a bumper on. You know, I, Ash and I'm, I have. I have a feeling that, that we're, we're pushing up a little bit on time to be able to smash these two things together. If we are getting this close is, to time, this is, is going to be two podcasts. I think now <laughs> I honestly, I, I mean, I can save closing comments, but you guys, you, you guys have the game to do it. Um, whether you go shoot 85 or 65 doesn't change that fact one way or another. So yeah. that I'm not saying like, just go play breaks off aggressive and who gives a shit if you shoot 85, but um Every person who has cared about a round of golf and played poorly, which is essentially every person that's cared about a round of golf, has felt that feeling. And um, you guys could go out and make 10 birdies and shoot 62. You could go out and make 10 bogeys and shoot 82. Um, stick to what you want to try to do. Learn from Learn from it, especially since this is really just a stepping stone to bigger things that you want to try and accomplish. Um, but you both make, you both make your, your fair share and then some of birdies, um, be yourselves, play aggressive, find your bubble and you'll be fine. Yeah, no, I, I love the advice because I think the other thing too, about not pressing it is if we think about it, kind of where all of this originated, once you put this idea in our head. I can't tell you the number of times Hussey and I have played where we kind of sit down and over over the post round beer and go, huh, we would have shot 68. Huh. <laughs> like, we didn't play mm-hmm. that. Like, we both kind of didn't play great, but it would have been 70, you know? So I think the whole point is we, t- we just tend to play well together. Like, if you actually just mm-hmm. mash our scorecards together, it tends to work out. And so that's kind of to your point. It's like, be ourselves, do our thing almost take the vibe of like, you know, again, to your point, like that is really good to know about the flags and stuff. Cause I think we're, it's going to be like a tournament setting in that sense, but from everything else, like let's just go play golf as we always do as friends and look at the end and the scorecard is going to be what it is. Cause you know, when we, when we play, even when we play together, we don't go, okay, full throttle, man. It's like, no, that's not how we, we both played really good golf. Like, I mean, the round, I've told the story before, but the round I broke par, I told Nick I wasn't going to make a real swing to the seventh hole because I was, like, sore and, like, 
you know, but all that did was slow me down. Good tempo. Like none of us ever go out and be like, I'm going to fucking let's go. I'm gonna shoot 65 and do that. It's like the good rounds are like, Oh man, look what just happened. Right. And our good rounds that we kind of look at after a beer tend to be like, we would have shot 69. Cool. That's probably how it's going to happen realistically. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe last little tidbit. This goes to the, um, call it approach shop strategy generally. Um, it's not just don't aim at flags. You don't have to get too cute, mm. right? You get, be- you get between clubs. It almost makes it easier. If you slow down and think about it for a second, slowing down is generally going to good, p- going to be a good piece of advice. You got a back flag that's tucked over something and you're between golf clubs. Just hit the shorter one away from the trouble yeah. and hit it hard. You may have some adrenaline. You may juice it. Um, you may put it to 10, 15, 20 feet. Um, but unlikely that you're going to dial in a feathery longer club that's going to land just where you want it to and, and stop next to the hole. Yeah. So just play with some margin. Hmm. Think about, think about your approaches before you get, before you get over the shot. Um, don't just zip the pin and, you know, it's 163. So I'll hit my 170 club or I'll hit my 160 club. Right. Um, yeah. think about kind of where that pin's located and how your shots generally are going to react coming off the face. And um, I think you'll, I think you'll be present, pleasantly surprised. I'm excited to see how you guys, how you guys fare. Um, I'm really excited to do the second version of this, the, the post, um, the post round um, debrief, if you will, uh, to get your guys' feelings and see how the first tee went and uh, see how you felt walking off the 18 green and um, hear about the, internal commentary that you had with yourselves as you were sit standing over shots. I think that'll be a, a fun one to do. And if we play well, we get to go play spyglass hell, which that'd be pretty cool. Three, three days at spyglass. Uh, well, if you qualify for the match, or I think it's match. I, I can't remember. What it I, I, I think it's one day of stroke play, a cut, and then two days of match play for there. I believe. Pretty badass. Pretty Just take bad. a one shot at a time, boys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't I, like, Give me the ball, man. I'm ready to go. Hussey's Hussey's already planning his match play strategy at Spyglass. He's already through both qualifying rounds, just standing on the yeah. sixth tee at we're, Spyglass. We're on, the fourth hole. We're, on the, we're on the fourth hole. It's like, Hussey, stop picking up your ball. We're playing stroke play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do have to hole out, boys. Um, have uh, fun. I, I'm excited to, to hear how it goes. Um, I'm proud of you guys for doing it. Um, yeah. You know that I believe in you wholeheartedly um thanks dad yeah go get him oh. go get him kiddos you like, like i told liz you you believe in our aptitude of golfers more than we do and that means a lot yeah it's crazy that you believe in us more than we believe in ourselves and so we appreciate that so i'm over here thinking hey. like i'm like this whole week of not playing golf i'm just thinking about those like pole hooks i hit and i'm just like how do i fix that and he's like, really? Because all I've been all I've been thinking about is just the absolute nuclear fucking bombs you were hitting. So maybe that's the difference, right? When you're not the player, uh, you remember the good stuff, and when you are the player, you get the scar tissue from the bad stuff. But everybody needs the at least yeah. one irrational fan around, and I'm I'm happy to be irrational in in any circumstance. So. You had you had the you had, you had, we'll talk about this on the bandit pod, but you had the the fan of the of the marshal when I told him you hit driver a fifty degree wedge at a number three at OG bandit from the back D. He was like, "Wow, it's pretty far." I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> he he hit into people who were hitting their third shot into a par five, sir. Like that is a very long tee shot. Hey, do you remember the first time yeah. you hit you played that hole with me? We both lost it right, and I think you stuck your hand in some gorse. Yep. And you fucking started bleeding. Yep. That was that was a bad introduction yep. to abandoned dudes. I think, I think I still wiggled a five iron out of there. So I was like right at the base. And then I hit it in the bunker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a bit of a bit of a um Yeah. Bit of a trek. Our group, I think Different I, wind. 
I think Dash made a 10. I think he shot like 50, 51 on the front nine. He was like 51, 37. But on that first night, he was like, whoa. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, holy shit. Dude. I was like. <laughs> uh, okay, boys. Uh, that's we're, awesome. We're going we're, we're gonna to go qualify. Hussey, I miss you, I'll, man. Wait. Miss you too. Come to slow, and I'll come to Seattle at some point. Well, I'll see you in uh, in a month. Yeah, that's take. true. That's true. Yeah, the three of us need to get together for um, some golf soon. That sounds fun. Namaste. Let's do it. Are we all going to be on the same team for the right, cookout? If I've got, if I've got anything, can't disclose that. that. Yeah, he can't disclose okay. that. It's like the it's like the Oscars, man. He's got to open the envelope. He doesn't even know who's on his team until he announces that next name. That's yeah, funny. I, I could I, I could be like Zach Johnson. <laughs> See, you Hussie, should you buddy? should make us all go. <laughs> you should you should do that. You should uh, um you should a, a blind sign up and you call the people that make the cookout. And then have to call the people that didn't make the cookout. That would be fun. Hey, uh, JD, I just want to say you're a great guy, but like I got to go in another direction this year. It's just, uh, you know how it is. I wish I could take everybody. You know, it's just, it's what I got to do. Vomit. I wish I could take 30 guys. Yeah, no, that doesn't matter to him because he's the only other guy, you dickhead. Sorry. Yeah. Zach, Zach Johnson makes Hey, JD, okay. come to Rustic. Come to Rustic with us. Yeah, you should. Thursday <sighs> before. I just really don't like that golf course. Yeah. I know. Okay. I know. Hot hot take, but Yeah, real quick before um, I get out of here, do you want to do you want to but, share that take? Practice round Friday? Spicy. I just I just think it um I played it once. I felt like it was um Felt like it could use a little bit of rough. Hmm. How about that? Like, um, too much it short feels grass, like the golf course. It just feels like the golf course runs into trouble everywhere. I, Depending I on how far you hit it, it just it just runs into trouble everywhere. And then there's other court, other holes where it's just sort of wide open nothingness, and those holes are just really blah. Every golf course has a few blah holes, sure, but um, it it almost had this feeling of, and I know the idea is like that's how the land was found, but it just has this feeling of of being almost contrived to make it seem like that's how they found the land. And I'm okay with somebody making a golf course. Like we were in the year 2024, I'm okay using bulldozers. Like, I don't need to, I'm fine with whistling straight, right? Like farmland, farmland, rolling dunes. Sure. I don't care. It's a fun golf course. Um, I just didn't think rustic. I think rustic takes fun and hard and kind of blend it together a little bit. And I would rather it, given the framework of what it is, I would rather have it just be kind of fun. That's that's a very that's a very rational take. I know what you're saying. My my thought, but anyway, um, I'll be. I think I'll be there for the practice round. Are we teeing off practice round late, like two, like we did last year? Early. No. Ten a ten a.m. Friday. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll take this conversation offline. We'll 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 talk, we'll talk about it. <laughs> All right. All right, boy. It was good to see you. Thank you for sharing. I feel like we've got some good. Thank you. We're just trying not to be the Spider-Man meme. That's our that's our goal is to just not be the Spider-Man meme. You? Me? Oh, uh, man. Me? man. No. Me? No. No. Can't wait to hear about it, guys. Seriously. Can't wait to hear about it. And then we'll talk about it afterwards. Peace.